So we're moving into a familiar format now. Nicole is going to take us through our first town hall of the year in terms of table activities. So I'm getting off the stage. No more dancing for me. Nicole, it's all yours. So really excited. I think that the work that we're going to do today or right now is going to set the stage for what's to come next uh, with this work here at Green River. So what we're going to do, so you're all seated at tables. And in your folder, you should have a small group tabletop activities. And so by way of explanation, I just want to talk to you a little bit about where these questions came from. So like Suzanne said, we have been planning and thinking about opening day since March. Um, and we, as a part of our planning process, we started to think about what kind of questions did we want to know the answers to in terms of thinking about how to jumpstart our efforts. And these are the set of questions that we came up with. Um, and some of them are focused on staff and professional development, students, student engagement, retention. And so we want to hear what you think we should be doing in each of these areas. So we're going to start off with round one. And each table should select a scribe or someone to take notes because what we're going to do is between the rounds, uh, we're going to go around and collect the um, answers to whatever questions in the, uh, for, that, for that particular round. So um, probably choosing someone with some nice penmanship uh, is probably a good idea. Um, <laughs> you should find paper on your, tab on your tables. There should be some uh, sort of larger size paper on each of your tables. And so what we're hoping for is like we'll do about 10 or so minutes of discussion uh, of the question, of the, the questions posed in each round. And then uh, maybe two or three tables can share out and then we'll do a pop-up if anyone wants to add um, something uh, to the discussion. So we're going to start with round one. And the question for round one is, what incentives or supports can be provided to faculty and staff related to helping to build a more equitable, reflective, and inclusive campus? And then there is a set of sub-questions. And so what we're hoping is that you'll be able to um, answer all of them uh, in the round, and if not, uh, at least a couple of them. So why don't we go ahead and get started? So we're going to come back, and what we want to do now is have one or two groups to volunteer to share out. Oh, that's the alarm there. Have one or two groups ag uh, agree to share out um, with the large group about some of the things they came up with. Not every group jump at once on this. Uh, Hi everybody, this share it out. We got mics at each of the stairs and up front. Well, look at this popcorn. These two people have popped. So we're going to have this table and this table. All right. So we need a mic over here. No, I'll, I can project I'm a college teacher. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. So I'm the faculty person but these guys are the people who basically let the uh, thank you <laughs> let the uh, um, clarify the problem and um, it's not just a problem of diversity it's the set of skills if you will uh, and that that would include uh, an attitude even that my students are, my diverse students are going to need more. It's, it's not that other students don't need it, but they need more. I feel I can do that, but I don't really have enough time. Because what that looks like for me is going up to the student and saying, yeah, you seem to be struggling here. Can we talk about it, right? And so now I'm trying to get them to an office hour. But the fact of the matter is, I don't have enough time in an office hour to do that for all the students who need it. And so it is the, it's what you said, 
I think the meta message to them is, I see you, it matters to me that you learn, and here's where your skill levels are, and here's what you need to work on, and most importantly, I'll be here to help you make progress on what you need to work on. I don't have the time to do it. So that's one of the, is that pretty much? Yeah. yeah? That's one of the things we identify, mm -hmm. is just the time to have that personal interaction with your students where, where you're following them every step of the day. How's it going today? What happened last night? Why didn't you get done whatever you got done? Um, we were, students think they fail when they look up and see the bad grade. They fail day by day. They fail when they decide to play Xbox versus study. You've got to somehow address that. You've got to be honest and Hard say, choice. so what Hard keeps choice. you from opening the book? Why do you open the Xbox? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about a way to structure your life so that you're more likely to open that book. That all is going to take time and energy that I don't feel I have, quite frankly. I've got like one hour office hour. And um, this is just me whining and complaining. Uh, but when I'm in a committee meeting that's getting nothing done, I'm thinking, what else could I be doing? And this would be one thing that I could be doing. So that was, is that, have we got that right? Yeah. All my peeps say, yeah. yeah. And I'm running it back to Cassie. Da, 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 da. I'm getting my steps in, everybody. That's good. Yeah, what does the Fitbit say? I, I'm not looking at my Fitbit quite yet. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Well, our table, we came up with, um, we did a lot of talking. <laughs> um, but one of the, some of the key things that we talked about were really the focus and the need for mandatory training. So if we feel that issues of diversity, equity, inclusion, and dealing with um, students with barriers is an important tenant to the college, then, then the college needs to um, establish some training and not just to make it optional because sometimes the frankly the people sometimes that need it the most are not the ones that come sometimes we think that um, in our own areas we're good and the problem is outside of us it lies with someone else or in another department so we feel that um, it would be best if there were some type of mandatory training that we all got an opportunity to take part in. One of the ideas that came across the table that really got us all very excited came from, um, because we work with DSHS uh, quite a, uh, a lot with our workforce training. And um, some of an area that the, uh, the case managers have to do is that they have to step into the lives of the clients in which they serve. And I think a lot of times we may forget or not really understand what students who are coming to us with a series of barriers are dealing with um, when they walk into our classrooms or into our offices. And they may show up late for something or late for class and then they're like, well, you weren't here on time and so we, don't continue to assist them. So one of the exercises that DSHS put their case managers through was to live a day in the life of one of your clients. So they had to actually become bus riders and see what it was like for um, a client to have to navigate the bus system just in order to make an appointment. How cool or would it be that if we had to um, step into the lives of our students and instead of you know saying well you missed this orientation or you are late for this orientation so now we're going to turn you away and you have to try to come another day or you miss you're late for class uh, maybe that student had to take their child to child care and then get take a bus there and they get back on another bus and take hours to get to class to only to be told no I'm sorry 
it wasn't good enough. So we feel that as an institution, if we were to ma make things mandatory and, and to think outside of the box in terms of sensitivity training as to what uh, people with barriers go through, then I think that it would um, enable us to be able to meet our students better where they are. I think there was the, the group over here, there was right over here that wanted to share out. Did you still want to share out? Thanks, Janae. Thank you. Um, so we, we, at our table, we were talking about uh, kind of similar ideas. The idea about time came up that Karsh was talking about um, and how do we kind of, you know, figure out in the classrooms, how do we cover the content that we need to cover, mm -hmm. but also make these connections, especially when you consider like cap sizes of classes, like how do we do that for a class that has 45 students or 28 students? Um, it's, I mean, it's oftentimes not a matter of will, it's much a matter of just time in the day and time in the class. Um, professional development opportunities, I, what you were just, just describing I think is really illustrative of you know, what we would need in order to be able to kind of build empathy. So more professional development opportunities, both on campus, um, kind of similar to what we used to have on campus, like the Teaching and Learning Center. Sorry, I'm a little taller than this microphone. Is that better? I'm getting a leg workout too. Did I? I'm gonna get that off without making a mess. Thank you. Did anybody get any of that I just said? Yes. How was it? No, I'm just kidding. All right, so professional development opportunities like the old uh, teaching and learning center that we had on campus, using something that's on campus to provide people with these professional development opportunities. Um, something like that I think is really important. More cross collaboration between uh, instruction and student affairs. One of the things that we realized at the table, and just wanna get verification from people, does everybody have in their folder the student affairs referral sheet? Did everybody get a copy of this? It was optional. Everybody should get a copy of this. It's on the table. Deb is gonna send it out electronically later today. This is great. Obviously, this is a living document. We noticed a few things like Mesa, for instance, that's not on here. Um, so it's gonna, but it's, I think it's our responsibility, all of us as a community, to be constantly updating a resource like this. But it engenders, I think, more kind of cross, uh, you know, more collaboration between instruction and student affairs. And then, um, this idea was very interesting. The, uh, you know, how can faculty, staff, and administrators demonstrate for students that we are all still learners looking to continue to grow when it comes to DEI issues? Um, that's something that I think we need to kind of, you know, we, we need to kind of make ourselves vulnerable to students, right, when it comes to stuff like that. And then finally, um, talking about improving uh, training opportunities, uh, especially for staff who serve as important contact points for students. We were talking about this, just imagine, we have five amazing building secretaries on this campus. And just think about how many students those people interact with every day, right? So many people, so many, so many people. And just, you know, the kindness that is often exemplified by our five building secretaries, um, you know, could be a make or break moment for some people. So how do we kind of, you know, how do we really identify what are the touch points on campus? What are the contact points with students? And then how do we, how do we continue to build on that? Thanks. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Janae Sommerfeld. I'm the Director of Budget, and I'm informally representing the business office. And <laughs> um, the difference is, is our office has very little student interaction. We're kind of behind the scenes. But the funny thing is, is a lot of what's already been said is kind of what we have also said. Um, so I was focusing on this, what resources staff um, are important to staff. And what we came with, up with was including professional development within our evaluations and having specific annual goals. Um, so it kind of goes to the mandatory um, professional development training that was all sp uh, spoken about. And ma having matrix measurements um, within those annual goals. Another thing I've, um, we mentioned is that worksheet that has all the links on it. Um, to me, that would have been great to have a week ago to prepare for today. Um, so having information ahead of time and having 
easy access to information. So when we go into forums like this, we're better educated um, about what's going to be discussed and researching and coming up with questions. The other idea that we came up with is, again, we have very little interaction with students in our area, is, but we have very valuable knowledge. And so using the staff as a, um, almost like a mentorship, the staff that we have that don't work with students can still mentor students in accounting, in finance, and I'm just talking about our area specifically, but there's a lot of areas that don't have connections with students that could be mentors. Um, that's some of our ideas. Great. Thank you. So we're... Um, Do we have yes. time for one more? Yes. All right. Well, our group, uh, our table talked about a lot of the things that have already been mentioned, funding, having adequate time, um, but something that we haven't talked about were the challenges. And we thought it would be important to address the undercurrent of resistance that there is toward working on initiatives around DEI. Um, so what are those fears of change around loss? You know, what are the things, what are the barriers that get in the way of people addressing how to move the needle? Mm -hmm. That's great. So we're going to, we have about 15 minutes or so. Uh, 25, actually. 25 minutes? We're good to 3.15. Okay, oh, we have to, until 3.15. So we're going to do round two. And so there's a, there are three questions, four questions here, um, that we'd like you to consider. I'm not going to read them because they're kind of long. But, so you'll have about 10 to 12 minutes in your group uh, to think about these questions. And I'm going to be coming around collecting your notes from round one. Okay, so. So, who's going to report out? What about the people in green? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All those people in green. There are a lot of green people. You <laughs> I've got people coming to mics. Go ahead, Liz. I get to go first. Hello. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh -oh. Back right. on the mics. So we said some of our external factors are housing, transportation, food instability, childcare safety, accessibility to technology, and um, connection with CBOs. Um, and then we talked about like housing in regards to it being short and not having enough like long-term housing for students. Um, one of our things were is that um, we could create like a resource center, a one-stop shop on campus for our students that could go and find those resources. Um, the other thing we found was as an external factor was those personal touches. Um, you can do this. You belong here. We value you. You're seen. Um, some of the solutions was we need more representation in staff and faculty that students can represent to see in themselves. Um, and then also somehow deal with the burnout that happens to a lot of the staff and faculty, especially for those who have to be here all year and have these large amount of times where you end up just going like this with students rather than having that personal touch. And how can we do that? Uh, I think that's about it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Hello, I'm Richard. Uh, I've been here for six months, and I'm from IT. And boy, we had a lot to say. <laughs> so as far as uh, things we can look into uh, to help support this, uh, we were looking at consolidation of support systems. Currently, there are a lot of support systems. Um, and a student has to log into five different systems with different passwords. That's confusing. Uh, bringing those all into fewer systems obviously would be better and probably more understandable. Uh, we'd also like to review support systems that could cross over between faculty and students that may have similar functionality to help both. Um, something we also discussed is uh, some students may um, be having trouble in classes 
and in many cases their peers will be able to help so possibly exploring ways to uh, do student to student mentorship mm. uh, to also help faculty uh, with the time issues um, things that could prevent students from coming into classes or uh, from completing uh, financial instability fear of failure class hours not being accommodating uh, lack of central service directories for certain ways that they may be able to get help if they're struggling uh, and services at the campus are all over the place. Uh, some students could be sent from one building to another several times, and that's very frustrating uh, if you just need some help. Uh, as far as other things, um, we were looking at online. The, uh, the online application for the state does not use friendly language. It is also only available in a single language, English. Too bad if you don't speak that. Um, we do have, uh, again, dispersed, hard to find systems uh, on the website. Uh, many of them are not advertised or explained, they're just as is. Uh, as far as uh, those services, they're often only presented at orientation. Uh, we don't follow up during their stay at our college um, to make sure that they remember all the services that are available. Uh, and then location of physical services, once again, is difficult to find. We don't really advertise that anywhere other than orientation. Uh, and then something else that we noticed is that um, it would be nice to have a system that could track when a student has missed multiple assignments in a course so that we could say, hey, this student might need somebody to contact them and see if everything's all right. Uh, but because we do not have a universal standard across the board to track coursework, we cannot do that. Every class tracks coursework in its own way. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I IT. I like IT. A lot of good ideas. Hello, everyone. My name is Chelsea, and I work in our TRIO program. Um, forgive me, I'm not trying to toot TRIO's horn, but a lot of our ideas um, are going to sound like that. Um, so we wrote that we would like to create a TRIO-esque program that's open to all students. Our TRIO program can only serve 200 students, but the holistic wraparound services that we're able to provide, because we only serve 200 students, are really important to the success um, of our students. <laughs> So Rosella has shared that at um, her previous institution, they were able to do this with institutional funds, um, and it was really effective. And so we had a really long conversation about that. We talked about how we have a current advising center that's really overworked, because we believe they're understaffed. Um, but also, we, all, we have a completion program, right? So we catch them at the beginning with entry advising, and then we have our current advising staff again, not a lot of them, to serve the population. And then we have a completion program, but it, we talked a lot about the retention in the middle and how we can better retain those students. Uh, we talked about having a mandatory one credit college navigation course, which I know we've talked about here. Um, for students that have 30 credits or less. Um, and the last thing was just um, increase educational capital um, by teaching students how to advocate for themselves, which is something we try to do in TRIO, providing them with questions that they can ask financial aid on their own, um, helping them put together the skills and tools so when they're in an office or in a situation or in the classroom, they know how to address their instructor, or kind of what questions to ask. Um, because I think that, that can be a challenge for our students. They just don't know what questions to ask. Um, TRIO's hope is that when they leave here, because we can't follow them, that they'll have those tools when they're at their four-year institution to do that. So, thanks. Thank you. Me? Okay. I'm Keith. I teach science, and I'm at a table of people who teach science. And so if it sounds like I'm tuning the faculty's horn, <laughs> I'm not. You're going to hear that in a minute. Um, Boy, all kinds of things we had here. One is, at my table, we're all science teachers. We're all STEM teachers. And if you want to increase diversity, a lot of the damage is done. In fact, almost all of it is done before they get to college. If you, get to, if you walk into our classes, you do not see the colors of skin and the difference of gender that you see in history classes and sociology classes and stuff. So you're not going to crack the problem of... Uh, diversity in STEM unless you reach down below the college level and really that means elementary school. So we got to start partnering with the K-12 schools. Another group, another institution we thought we were going to need to, yeah. 
Another institution we thought we were going to need to partner with is we were talking about, look at Highline. Look at how diverse Highline is. We're not as diverse, and yet we're only a few miles away. What is one big difference between the two institutions? Anybody in the world can get to Highline on a bus any time of day. Getting here on a bus is really darn difficult. So they are much more accessible to people of lower income than we are. So if we could figure out how to improve our public transportation situation, we might do a lot. But lastly, and I think this is most important because it's my idea, um, <laughs> this has everything to do with what Karsh was talking about before, and we had the same thing on, on our list. We've been working with, in the science division, we've been with, with people at Lake Washington College, and one of the most important things they found to increase retention is for the faculty to sit down and meet with every student one-on-one -on -one and make the time. Now, Karsh says, and he's right, how do we find the time to do that if I have 100 students? Well, as an institution, we could create the time. I'm not talking about an extra class. I'm not talking about a one credit class. Imagine that we paid teachers, full-time teachers, we pay the full-time teacher, you teach one class. Adjuncts, we pay them to teach one class and we pay them for two more classes that they don't teach. And it's their job when they're teaching that class and you will meet with every student every week. And you will talk to every student every week. Imagine a student who comes here, they're new to the college, right? Because, I mean, students can spend four years at this college and never find the TRIO office, never find the MESA office, never find the counseling office. They all talk to teachers. So imagine students coming to this college and every week they have to talk to a teacher. That would only have to happen in one class. After that, they would have the connection to the college. You wouldn't have to do it for their whole college careers. So if we as an institution would spend that kind of money, and that's a lot of money to pay teachers to do that, that would, get, that would solve Karsh's problem. We would have the time to talk to every student. Wow, is Janie still here? Oh, that's too bad. Because that's a fabulous idea. And I just want to say, I'll throw it out there. This is, this is the exact conversation we need to be having in terms of how we define faculty responsibility and faculty work and how we organize our next contract even more around student success and support the faculty in the ways in which we know will have an impact on that. So let's get on that. Let's get on it. That's a model that has worked at a lot of institutions extraordinarily successfully. I'm sure there are many others, but hold on to these ideas. Hold on to these ideas, and I'll be collecting those round two sheets in just a moment. Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer. I wanted to add a bit about a non-academic support system. So correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong. I've only been here six months. But from my understanding and my table's understanding, there is no concentrated health center on campus which I think is really integral for a campus community, for students to be able to go somewhere for education on safe sex breast practices, if they want to know where they can get the flu shot, if they need some free condoms, an emergency tampon, if they need mental health counseling, if they need to just sit out because they're feeling very anxious, or anything like that. But that seems to be a lack currently. That's all. Hi, I'm John. I'm from the Far East table. And I was the only one wearing green today, so I've been asked to read a couple of our ideas that... At our table! At our table! Come on, green, stick together. <laughs> We're all friends. Um, uh, one idea was to revisit college values. Where are they? And is what we're doing reflecting our values? Try to bring those together across all departments and staffing classifications. And uh, the other point was uh, Gustavo made a point about being humble, the teachers being humble, how important that is. We are all experts in our areas, and students uh, should not be considered or made to feel like a hindrance and to appreciate them in order to teach them. Those are my points from the Far East table. Thank you. I wanted to add one more point that I think is critical in terms of student success, and this is answering question number three, um, which is the invisible load or the hidden load that staff of color have in terms of the services they provide and the mentorship they provide to students of color in particular, and thinking about who from the students gravitate towards them. So we talked about the need for more representation so we can kind of spread out that capacity and make sure 
sure that there's not burnout um, among staff of uh, color in that sense because that's also connected to their plight, their experiences here at Green River, and then ultimately their retention and also their success. Um, I think it's absolutely critical that there's no substitute to having that representation. So really, if we're thinking about our diverse students, um, I think one of the irreplaceable ways that we can do that is really making sure that we're taking care of our staff of color. Of course, this goes for the faculty side as well, but I just wanted to mention that invisible load um, that many of us gladly and happily um, do, and it's really an honor and a privilege to do every single day, but just to be mindful of the capacity. So really increasing our capacity in the sense of students who can serve a wide range of students, but also deeply connect with students of color. Okay. So we're going to wrap up. Um, so thank you so much. We were, when we were talking about uh, the table topics, the table conversations, um, we knew we were going to get through round one and two. We thought maybe we could do three or four, but we weren't certain. But one of the things that Suzanne said was that Round three and round four is the work that begins with this academic year. A lot of it is very specific and pragmatic, and so um, be, we want you all to be thinking about the questions that are posed in round three and round four um, throughout the academic year. So in terms of my takeaways, I don't want to, this has been a tremendous day, um, I think at the, Again, when I got the call from, or the email from Jody, I did not know what to expect. Um, but it's been an absolute joy working with uh, you all over the last six months. And then today has just completely blown me away. So I'm just very grateful. Um, and thank you all for staying. Um, Susanna keep, keeps saying, I don't believe everybody stayed. I don't believe everybody stayed. Um, <laughs> But you, you've also not only stayed, but you've stayed present, and you've been very thoughtful and, and been very open. Um, I think that this is the beginning of all the tremendous work that's going to happen and continue to happen over the next few years um, and get us to our goal of 52%. I said 54% last time, did I? I think I, anyway, I'm not good at math, so here we go. So, um, but I wanted to, I have, I've, I have like 10 minutes. I had to close up, and then Suzanne was going to come up. But what I really want to do in the last, in my last few minutes, is to hear from you, and some of the takeaways or aha moments or some, something that you're going to be taking away from today. Or even a word, one word. Call it out, Barbara. Hello. Might take us to that next place where comes where there would be the conversations about the how. This is how we're going to do it. Or here's some ideas about the next steps that we're going to move into. Or ideas or a committee. I can't believe I'm saying that word myself, <laughs> but somebody whose focus is to keep gathering the information, keeping the conversations going, moving things forward, staying on top of it, reminding some of us, or us reminding some others that, remember we said we would do this thing. We have to, we need a meeting on the calendar. I know everyone's busy, but we need to commit to this. So this feels closer to that than any of the other ones that I've been to. So just want to share that. Mm -hmm. That's what we call progress. <laughs> call it out. Call it out. I've got something. I just want to say thank you for sharing your personal story. And it's a reminder that that's often when the connections are made, uh, especially when we encourage our students to bring in their own experiences. It both includes, hopefully, includes them into the classroom. And some of the best learning I've seen is the peer-to-peer -peer making a safe space for that. 
So I wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Hi, so I have um, two nieces who are moving to our area to go to college, fresh out of high school. Um, and it was like, um, it crushed me to find out that they were not coming to Green River, that they were going to Highline, both of my nieces, one um, academically and the other one for sports. So um, being in this room, this is only my second opening, um, opening day event that I've been part of, but it's exciting to know that um, my future nieces and nephews might consider Green River as an option for them to study in because um, we didn't offer the sports that my um, my niece uh, got the, her scholarship in, and uh, my other niece said that a bunch of her friends, who are friends of color, were coming with her to go to Highline. The Green River wasn't even a name that she, that my nieces knew when we were talking about colleges and that I worked here. Um, so it's exciting to know that um, the trajectory of our, our student body might be changing a little bit, especially for me. I'm a Pacific Islander. My two nieces are going to college on scholarship at Highline. It's my hope that in the future, more Pacific Islanders will be offered those opportunities here in Green River. Thank you. Other takeaways that you'd like to share from Nicole? She's got a long flight back tonight, winter. Fill her mind. Please, go. Okay, I have something to share. So we are in this room. We are trying to come up with ideas and services to help a group of people who are not here. How do we include students in this conversation and get ideas from them? I think we need something. What the ideas we come up with may not be what they want. Absolutely. Yeah, or need. Any other, other last call outs? Last call outs for Nicole. A couple questions you've asked that I thought were really central to everything that we're doing. Um, do you see these matter? I mean, you all ask, you know, ask that as teachers or staff when you see these students. Uh, the two questions I think that resonate with me from today is do you see me and do I matter? I just think those are probably things that are focal points for all of us. You know, as we look at our students, um, if each one of them feels like they've been asked that question, I think that goes a long way. That's a real takeaway for me. And I think our response should be, I want to, you know, yeah, we want to see you here. I want to see you here. I want to see you stay. So I just want to thank you once again for staying with us and engaging the entire day. I'll be back in January, and I expect, what, so 52, so halfway there? Yeah. <laughs> By then. Um, but I, you know, this has been wonderful and amazing. And I, again, I want to thank Suzanne and Jody and the whole Green River community for bringing me here and making me feel so welcomed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole. Um, this day could not have been possible without you. And I look around the room this afternoon, and you're all still here. <laughs> As Nicole was sharing with you, it, it shows our passion, our commitment, and our devotion to this institution and to the students that we have the pri privilege to serve. I cannot thank you enough for giving your day today for each other, for us, and our college's future. I cannot express my gratitude more. This has been a remarkable day for us, and an excellent opening day. Yes, you'll get an evaluation in a couple of days. We'll figure out what to do next year, how to make it better, what worked well. But this is a day I hope we can all reflect on that brought us together in community. We learned through listening to understand. 
and we've kept the priority in our conversations today around the student. There are no sides when it comes to student success. There is not a staff person or an administrator or a faculty member. We are all human beings that are committed to this mission of this institution in the service of our students. We are all on the same side. So let's be innovative and creative, make good use of what we identified in our town halls last year, make good use of the great ideas that are coming out of our conversations this afternoon and as Barbara said, we're going to need to be reminded periodically, hey, we agreed to do this. Hey, we said we were committed to this. And there will be challenges, and there might be 13 different ways we think we can reach that goal, but the key will keep our eyes on the goal because our goal is the same. We know the why, and now we have to talk about the hows. This is a year of talking about the hows, and it is a year of speaking to our students to know exactly what they need and how they need it. So I want to pause for a moment, because I thought that there might be a piece of information that you would enjoy hearing about before I wrap this up for a reception. And George, I'd like to have George Frazier come up. Some of you have already caught on to it in terms of our Gator, GatorNet news. Um, since George leads our foundation in development, uh, I thought it would only be appropriate for him to report a very important news brief. So a short story today. We um, got notification over the summer that the estate of Jerry and Dana Berger was, uh, had named uh, the college and the foundation as a beneficiary. And the Burgers had a, a business in Kent for many years. They had been involved in scholarships here at the college, and they had created a marital trust. And we knew that that trust, um, we were part of that, uh, of that uh, trust document. So got notification that unfortunately, Mrs. Berger had passed away. Jerry had passed away some time before. And we uh, got notification that the gift was coming, but we had no idea what the size of the gift was. So my team um, was showed up knocking on the window during president staff meeting, all of them staring through the window <laughs> into the boardroom, <laughs> saying, you gotta come out. So it came out, we opened the check, it was for $1 million. <laughs> so here's, here's the better news, I need your help spending it. Um, <laughs> So you have all been amazing stewards on campus of our scholarship program, of the Gator Pledge, and we're trying to get to the place where no student makes a choice not to come to Green River or leaves Green River because finances are an issue. We're not there yet, but this million dollars gets us a little closer to that. So whatever you can do to help students direct them to the scholarship program, direct them to the Gator Pledge, get them to the completion coaches, because there's resources there with the completion coaches, that would be a huge help. You can help us spend that money keeping students at Green River or getting them to Green River. So I need your help. But it's a great day, really excited to be able to announce that gift. The good news, there's probably still another 100,000 or so coming, so it'll be a little bit over a million dollar gift. And uh, we have some other gifts that we'll be announcing after, uh, after we can do that, but uh, there's probably another three or $400,000 worth of gifts that we'll be announcing over the course of the next six months. So, right. good stuff. Excellent. I thought that would be a, a nice uh, way to bring this day to closure. I remember when I was reading about Green River College and determining whether I would make application to have the opportunity to serve as your president, one of the things that stood out to me through the accreditation reviews and was commented on through commendation, in fact, was the commitment and dedication of the staff and faculty at the institution for the institution's mission and purpose of being. And that, to me, overrode anything else that one could have read about Green River College in the news. <laughs> and today, look around this room. Look around this room. 
That is what that commendation reflected. You are the hope of our communities that we serve. And it's through your work and effort that our students who come here to us will succeed. Thank you so very much. Keep, remember State of the College Address, October 10th, 12 to 2. I don't remember where, a big space. We have a lot to talk about in terms of the hows. We have a lot more detail. Thank you over there in terms of my IT people. They were probing me about those completion numbers earlier. There's plenty of time to talk about data, what it tells us and what it's not telling us. And there's a plenty to talk about in terms of the hows. We are on our way, Green River College, to meeting that challenge of doubling our completion in five to seven years. Let's go! Yeah. Woo! All right. So, please, if the sunny sky is not calling you, we will be here for about an hour. We're just kind of mingling in the lobby area. There's some fresh beverages, I think. Some little coffee tables have been set up just to mingle, chat. Opportunity to talk with Nicole for a little bit longer. Enjoy your day. Thank you for your commitment to our day and our college. This is going to be a great year.